that I've been able to assist and be a part of this service to remember one of the great actors and truly nice human beings that uh, we know in the whole film industry, Tyrone Power. And I'm dressed today in my Irish clergy kilt because of his own Celtic ancestry. He was um, black Irish. I'm very proud of that. My wife always tells me that Tyrone Power was so handsome that he should have been a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I agree. But, uh, how more handsome can you get than that? Maybe take a moment and pray. Our gracious Lord, we gather here today for this annual memorial to remember one of the great actors of Hollywood, whose presence was greater than the screen itself he appeared on, Tyrone Edmund Power. But we remember a man whose memory has not passed, one who is more than just a handsome face or a swashbuckling hero. We remember a man who meticulously studied his craft, striving for perfection in every performance he gave. A man who brought countless hours of adventure and enjoyment to his many fans and admirers in but a far too brief life of 44 years. We remember one who was recalled by his friends and family as a kind, passionate, and devoted man who had a wonderful sense of humor and a quick wit. We remember a man who served his country and flag in World War II as a Marine Corps pilot. We remember a man who has taken his just place in the sacred ground of Hollywood Forever Cemetery amongst the immortals of screen and stage. And we give you thanks for this beautiful day that allows us, even in the midst of those who have gone on before, that we can remember the vitality of life in the sweet smell of the green grass and the trees around us and the sun that spreads its pleasant rays and warms us in the gentle breeze. And we give our fond remembrance once more of that inscribed on Tyrone's memorial that we may say once more Shakespeare's immortal words, Good night, sweet prince, and flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. For this we pray in thy name, O Heavenly Father. Amen. I've been coming up here that long. Um, that's the year that my dad introduced me to this man. He was watching a movie, and normally I walk right by the TV, but this time I stopped and turned and went back. And I asked my dad, I said, who is that guy? And he says, it's Tyrone Power, he died really young. That's the only two things he told me. But I looked at him, and it was magic, and it's been magic ever since. So I'm happy to be here. It's my first time speaking since 1971. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm going to read out of Romina's beautiful book that she wrote. And I'd encourage anyone who doesn't have this book to pick up a copy because you will know this man like you've never known him before when you read this book. So the things that I chose, there's so many wonderful things. I chose um, an article for a newspaper that was written in 1945. And it, they wanted his basically his philosophies and things that he thought about. So I'm going to pick three things of what he thought about life, death, and immortality. Life. I don't believe that I personally have reached a definite philosophy of life. I think one's philosophy changes as one's desires, position, and ambitions change. There isn't any age where one stops growing mentally, and so there isn't any age where one reaches a philosophy. During the past three years, I've changed tremendously, and my ideas on living have changed with me. Before the war, I used to be interested in a lot of trivialities. Like so many people, I was content to live in the fringe around life. I wasted a great deal of time worrying about incidentals instead of getting to the core of things. Another way in which I've changed is that I no longer believe in putting things off. There was a time when I used to procrastinate a great deal. Now I've discovered that doing things as promptly as possible simplifies life. Death. Life is trouble enough without worrying about something you don't know anything about. Naturally, the thought of death must be somewhere in our subconscious minds. We know it's bound to happen someday, but we accept it, just as we accept the furniture in our rooms without giving the separate pieces a great deal of conscious thought. Why worry about death? We know it's going to get dark tonight, but we don't worry about it. And finally, immortality. I believe in one kind of immortality. People live in the people they leave behind. There are probably people who have passed away who have influenced you. So long as that influence remains, they are alive in you. Thank you, Deb. Mm -hmm. I, I appreciate that beautiful mask you're wearing. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Now for everybody that's watching, I want you to know that everybody actually is socially distanced here, I think, properly. <laughs>
And I'm not wearing my mask so you can hear me, but we can hear you well. Oh, good. I'm glad. But I was telling everyone before the service, my wife and I went into uh, Costco and we were shopping. We came back home, put our mask on, came back home, we were unloading the groceries. And uh, we took our mask off and it wasn't my wife. And so you can imagine what a hard thing that was. But, but I kept the one I brought home because she spends left than my wife does. <laughs> So once more bless this place, this sacred spot, and that we might again next year remember it. For it is in remembering in speaking one's name that they live in our midst. And so once more we speak the name of Tyrone Edmund Power, and he is here. For memory never dies, as it's held in the hearts of those who care. In thy gracious name, O God, we pray. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you. Amen.